Hi guys, Adam from Midwest Panel Builders and today we're going to talk about the differences between VNAV and VCalc and the different types of VNAV that you might experience in a Garmin avionics system. So when you're flying behind these avionics, there's some nuances that surround VNAV and VCalc and all that that depend heavily on the scenario in which you're flying as well as the type of equipment you have in your aircraft. So in order to try to help navigate that, um, we're going to demonstrate some of it and talk about uh, those differences so that you can understand what you need to do when you're flying uh, in your aircraft. One thing I want to point out is that in the context of this video, we're going to be talking about the person that's going to be flying a class one aircraft. So that's going to be a single engine piston under 6,000 pounds. The reason is because, frankly, most of the people watching this video are going to be in that category. Um, and once you start getting to class two or higher aircraft, so it's going to be your twins or over 6,000 pounds or turbines, uh, things change for them anyways. So first let me explain what VNAV is. So when we're flying an aircraft that are certainly ones that are as digital as this, we have LNAV and we have VNAV. LNAV is lateral, so that's going to be you know, GPS mode if you're flying with that. Uh, technically speaking, a localizer, an ILS, is a form of LNAV. Uh, VNAV is the same thing, but vertical. In the context though of what we're talking about, when we say LNAV and VNAV, we're talking about doing these things digitally. So we're using the computers, the GPS, to figure out uh, how that's going to work. So if you have a GTN series navigator, you have access to VNAV on that unit. What you're gonna do is your flight plan on the GTN is going to have the ability to have altitude constraints put next to waypoints. If you load a star, for example, those altitude constraints are gonna be loaded for you. And all you have to do is go on there, click on that waypoint's altitude, hit the button that says VNAV direct, and then now it's gonna sequence all of that for you. If you want to do this custom, which is what we're gonna do on our flight demo later, you can do that as well. You fill in all the waypoints in your flight plan and you can set any altitude constraints you want to. One example where that might be useful is if you're on an IFR flight plan and ATC tells you to cross a certain waypoint at a certain altitude, um, then you can just put that in and then you can tell it I want to descend at 500 foot per minute if possible and then the GTN will figure out what it needs to do to get you to that waypoint at that altitude at the descent rate that you desire. Now I mentioned earlier even with that GTN you can still do the G3X's version of VNAV. The G3X's version of VNAV is single point so that means you're going to select a waypoint, you're going to set your altitude and you're going to capture it and that's it. You can't do it on the, the entire flight plan. You have to do it by individual waypoints. So that's a little bit of a limitation. So if you do say load a star in and you load it in on your two inch navigator, you're going to be kind of manually doing all those waypoints because it's not going to be doing that for you. So with that being said, then there's also V-Calc mode. V-Calc mode is what the two inch navigators are capable of. And then also on the GTN series units, you can turn off VNAV and revert to V-Calc if you wanted to. What we're going to do now is go out to the airplane uh, and get in the air and we're going to demonstrate the GTN's version of VNAV as well as the G3X's version of VNAV uh, in real time and then we'll come back here and we'll talk about VCalc. Okay, here's my uh, flight plan I've got set up over here. I set up some user waypoints for demonstration. I've just brought them off of the Flint 040 radial off of their VOR. I did 22, 24 and a half, 27 nautical miles just to get some spaced out waypoints. I pre-programmed this, but I'll show you how to do it. These are my altitude constraints. So you just tap on the altitude, and this will be empty. So you can do at, you can do at or above, at or below or between, and you can go whatever altitude, flight level or MSL, and then you hit enter, and you hit save. So I did that 4,500, 4,000, 3,500. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take us direct to our user waypoint five. So I tap down it over here, I'm gonna hit this direct to button here, and I'll hit activate. I'm going to hit nav on my autopilot, and now it's going to start turning us around. Coming back to the flight plan, I'm going to hit my altitude constraint. I'm going to wait a second until we get established on our inbound course for our user waypoint 5, but as soon as we do, I'm going to hit VNAV direct 2. Now, if you were doing a star, you could do exactly the same thing where you tap on a waypoint on the star and hit VNAV direct 2, and it needs to be the next waypoint that you're going to it can't be anything further along. It'll automatically sequence to the next one, as you'll see, uh, once it picks up that first one. Okay, we're established on our inbound course to our user waypoint five. We're going to my altitude here, VNAV direct two. Vertical okay, track. you heard the vertical track. Coming over to the G3X here, we've got our magenta. That's the altitude that it's gonna hold at the next waypoint. 
we've got a vertical track line. Think of this as like a glide path. And then over here at the V speed, or the vertical speed uh, bar rather, we've got a little carrot there, that's our vertical speed required. And then up top, I've got a data bar that says estimated time to vertical to VNAV. And that's uh, three minutes and 20 seconds. So now what I'm gonna do is on my MCP, I'm gonna set my altitude pre-select to my bottom waypoint, which in this case is 3,500 feet. I'm gonna hit VNAV arm. And now you can see we're on VNAV and our altitude select is our arm uh, item in the uh, scoreboard. So once we get to 3,500 feet, even if the VNAV would let us go lower than that, the altitude select is gonna stop us from doing that. So if ATC is clearing you on a star, and they say, you know, clear to descend by the star, but maintain this altitude uh, upon reaching it, then that's what that uh, uh, altitude pre-select is gonna do for you. Otherwise, you just pick the bottom altitude on that procedure. So here we are turning inbound on our little course that I made. Now you can also see we've got a bottom of descent marker on the G3X display up here at our last waypoint. And now we are beginning a descent. 4,000 feet is our next one. I'm going to reduce power to reduce airspeed. And you can see that our required vertical speed is uh, just behind 500 feet per minute. The autopilot is going to trim itself out here and then it's going to get uh, stabilized. All right, we're about uh, eight-tenths of a mile here from our next waypoint. And what's actually really nice is because of how I spaced this out, it's actually going to set us up so that we cross that waypoint at 4,000, and then we just keep our descent. So it tries its best to maintain a stabilized descent path if it thinks it can do it. And you're going to see that right here. 4,000 feet exactly, and we just crossed over the waypoint. That's how accurate this system is. Now we're continuing on to 3,500 feet, which is our bottom altitude again, based on the flight plan that we set in the GPN. And you can see, once again over here, that's our bottom of descent marker. The B is just covered by our uh, track line. All right, there's our 200 foot alert on the altitude. And uh, the GTN, you can see the waypoint's flashing. So the GTN's about to make a turn here. And we're gonna cross right next to that waypoint at exactly 3,500 feet, and you can see that our altitude is being captured now by the altitude pre-select system. And there you go. It's that simple to get a VNAV, and that was a custom one, mind you. Again, if you put in a star, it's going to have all that preloaded for you. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how to do the VNAV on the G3X and the difference between it and the GTN. Now the G3X's VNAV uh, is what you're going to use if you're in internal flight plan mode like I am, and you can see that on the HSI here, if I tap on it, and then it comes up in this window, it says flight plan source internal. If you have a 2-inch navigator, that's going to be the GNX-375, uh, the GPS-175, GNC-355. Uh, those units uh, don't have VNAV built into them, they have VCALC, which uh, we're going to show you uh, on our display uh, in a little bit. So, what I did is I set up a user waypoint that is 10 miles from my destination airport. It sets me up pretty conveniently for a downwind uh, to the active runway there. Uh, so this is a, a method in which I can see most people kind of using the G3X's VNAV. Uh, it's for VFR stuff where you know you want to send a pattern altitude or something like that. Um, you can use it for quick hit items like if ATC says cross this waypoint at this altitude. Um, and you're navigating again on a 2-inch navigator, you can do it there. Otherwise, honestly, it's a lot easier to do it on the GTN if that's what you've got. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and click on my user waypoint 2. I'm going to hit direct 2. I'm going to activate it. I'm going to hit nav on my MCP. And that's going to turn us in. Okay, so I'm heading direct to my uh, destination airport here. I'm uh, at a position that's pretty convenient for the uh, final approach, or for the uh, entry into the... Uh, pattern to the airport here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my VNAV. I'm going to go menu, menu, VNAV, waypoint T95. I'm going to be 1,000 feet EGL by two nautical miles before. You can see I got a minute and a half to go. I'm going to show you what happens at that minute and a half. So I'll bring up my uh, page here. Watch that, and in about a minute, we're going to get a tone uh, and a vertical track indication, and uh, I'll show you here what that sounds like. Vertical track. Okay, at one minute, we got our vertical track. We're approaching the VNAV profile. You can see it started us one dot above. There is our v speed, vertical speed required, and there is the altitude that's going to descend us, too. 
I'm going to go ahead and set my MCP to 1800 feet. I'm going to arm VNAV mode. You can see over here it's armed on the scoreboard. And uh, we're going to let it do its thing and watch what happens. Okay, VNAV has gone from armed to active. And you can see now we've got our pre-selected vertical altitude of 1830 arm. And it's just now descending us. I'm going to reduce a little bit more power for this descent. Another quick feature that I'll show on uh, the G3X here. Now this is um, by using the altitude pre-select. Uh, this bar here that keeps moving is the point at which we are going to be at our pre-selected altitude. So you can see it's moving because our vertical speed is changing a little bit um, as it's kind of capturing and, and holding that VNAV descent. So roughly two miles from the airport is where it's showing that it's going to have us. So that's a pretty cool feature. This can be used on climbs, it can be used on descents. You don't have to be using VNAV for that, uh, but either way, it is a really nice feature to have. Okay, we're capturing our uh, VNAV altitude here. And it's got us basically two miles from the airport. Now we've approached our target. It's being us to let us know that VNAV is done. And uh, now we're in altitude hold. You can see it's at 1830 because that's 1,000 EGL here. So I can just... Uh, drop that down to 1800 and fine tune it if I wanted to. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect autopilot, land the airplane, and uh, we'll go over the 2-inch navigator and uh, debrief on the ground. Okay, so we're back on the ground here, and uh, we've got a system with a 2-inch navigator. This is the GPS-175 hooked to this G3X Touch. We're on external flight plan mode on the G3X Touch. You may not be able to see it too well, however, flight plan source there does say external GPS. What I wanted to show is that I can still go menu, menu, and VNAV is available for us. I didn't show this in the aircraft, but with the GTN, if you're in external flight plan mode over here, this page is not accessible. You have to switch to internal mode to get to this page, and that's why I did that when we were flying in the aircraft. So with that being said, this is going to work exactly the same way as I'd shown in that flight. It's single waypoint, you're going to have to select the waypoint, select the altitude that you want to be at, get there, and then do the next one after the VNAV expires because you've reached that point. So in just a second here, we're going to take a look at the GPS-175 and show you what the VCALC mode looks like. Uh, one thing I'll throw out there is the GTN series, you can actually turn off VNAV in configuration mode, uh, for, ex for experimental particularly, and switch it to VCALC if for some reason you don't want VNAV on the GTN. When you do that, this is going to work exactly the same way on the 175 as it will on the GTN in that mode. So let's go to that now. On the 175 here, we're in the map page. I'm going to go home. We're going to go to utilities. And you see we've got VCALC. Now with VCALC, we're going to s it looks much the same as what we've got on the uh, G3X. So I can say 1,000 feet above the waypoint, 2 nautical miles before, and I will select the waypoint as CZK. Now you can see that I already needed to send a target and this is the vertical speed required. The way that you would do this is you would just go into vertical speed mode on the autopilot and kind of more or less set your vertical speed to whatever this wants you to. So it's a little bit more manual, so if you're in an airplane that doesn't have the GFC 500 uh, and you don't really have any other way to couple your autopilot to a vertical track, this might be you know, what works for you because you have to monitor it anyways. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys understand the differences between VCALC and VNAV, or for that matter, the different types of VNAV that we can do with these systems. This is not all-encompassing. Uh, if you're flying one of Garmin's integrated flight decks like the G123000 series, or you're flying behind a TXI, some of this information is going to be a little bit different, and unfortunately, we don't have access to that, so it's uh, hard for us to illustrate that. But for anybody who's flying with a GTN and G3X, or a 2-inch navigator in G3X, or even a G5 for that matter, uh, this is going to be applicable to you. If you have any other questions about this topic, or any other topic for that matter, uh, please feel free to leave a comment on this video. Uh, your comments help us determine what videos we need to make and uh, where there's uh, different areas that need to be explained better with these Garmin Avionics. As complex as they are, there's a lot of little nuances like this that need to get covered. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next one.